back, welcome back, welcome back. I'm trying not to talk so loud, y'all, because I like to Can scream. we talk? Whoa, whoa. Hey, for a minute, hey, girl, I want to mm. know. Copyright, copyright, stop. Okay, Strike we gotta stop, then we gotta stop. Strike it out. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Can We Talk with Zay. These topics are going to be... With Zay. Hey. And Chris. Um, Anyways, continue. We'll, we'll, so we'll these talking. topics today are going to be more so pointed for my melanin warriors. They melanin warriors. Um, so I, we're just going to try our best. Some of these are probably, we're not going to have, I feel like this probably might be our shortest episode just because we might have not a lot to say about it because it's kind of like, you'll see by the topics, like it's really not that much that needs to be. We say but, that and then we could easily get, get into a list. tangent. Sorry guys, I had said this was going to be a short episode, but it turned out to be one of our longest. Enjoy. <laughs> Enjoy. Okay, y'all. So I guess we can start with the oldest thing. Yes. You know? Okay. Ooh, this is this is actually quite old. We're a yeah. little bit late on this, but We're we did hear what Mr. Extremely. H to the O to the V. I don't hey, listen to Ho. H. I'm sorry. I don't. <laughs> H to the O V. Hey, hey. We can let we can definitely see what Mr. So, uh, what Hove was speaking at at the Grammys just a few weeks ago. That, that happened that in February, was like, right? Yeah, that was in February. Or was it? Because it happened before. Oh, yeah, it happened before the Super Bowl. It happened yeah, before the Super Bowl. Because the Super Bowl, no, yeah. so, but, um Jay-Z did go. He did accept the award. He was actually there, by the way, as was Beyonce, as we all know, with her big old Texas hat, Texas Hold'em. She's got the country music. That's another topic for another day. But it's what Jay-Z said at the awards. He took a moment to, I guess, defend his wife slash bring attention to the fact that Beyonce has the most Grammy wins of all time, but she's never won album of the year. year. Once again, she's won the most Grammys ever, but she's never won album of the year. Some of y'all, some of y'all felt like you were wild. Some of y'all did the robbing. Some of y'all don't even don't even deserve to be in the category. That's what he said along to that nature. And then he also said, uh, when I get nervous, I tell the truth or or whatnot, you know, kind of implying that he was nervous up there because he realized, okay, I'm just going to tell y'all exactly how I feel. How does this, how does the person who's won the most Grammys ever not get nominated or not ever says that she won album of the year? He was just bringing attention to the Grammys, how it's kind of lopsided. We all know that they are most award shows Someone's gonna get snubbed. Someone's not gonna win. Someone's not gonna get the praise they deserve. And it is run by the higher ups, issues. by people. Um, it's not usually melanin people making these votes or making these executive decisions. And even if it is told to you that it is a diverse group of people in the yeah. academy, you can only believe what you want to. Who's making these decisions? At the end of the day, who is going to make the most money? That mm, is the exactly, answer that yeah. they need to have. With that being said. We wanted to bring attention to this because um, what we what we thought, what Chris and I were talking about when we first heard this was, um, and maybe you're thinking it now, oh, what about the BET Awards? Bring more attention to, to black artists in that sense. We've tried, not us, like I said, we've done something, but we as a society have tried to bring more attention to black people getting this as many flowers as they deserve but we came to kind of like a conclusion or an answer of why don't we take the biggest black stars the ones who truly have the most money and why don't you come together and make the awards that are Grammys and Oscars as worthy as that because at the end of the day it doesn't move the needle it's not like it's not like Beyonce's going to win it next year randomly and even if she does it's only going to be seen as a, a pity oh look at what Jay-Z Hove said it so now we got to give it to her and people don't want really want that you know it wants to be organic organically she has not won the album of the year ever has she, does she have the most wins yes she does are there plenty of black artists and and musicians who deserve to get the awards every year but don't absolutely i just didn't appreciate the fact now granted of course i appreciate a man that's going to stick up for his wife i appreciate a man that's not afraid to hold back but what i will say is that you beyonce and jay-z you guys always want to be in these predominantly white spaces and then claim woe is me but you guys have 
when's the last time you've seen them at the BET Awards? When's the last time you've seen them at the Soul Train Awards? But there's so many where it's predominantly us or like, um, there's like also um, another different type of Soul Awards that are on primarily black networks. So to me, it's just a little disheartening and a little kind of ignorant to be like, oh, well, she didn't win this, but it's like, okay, you guys don't even give back. No, granted, I have seen Beyonce literally do it to other black communities and HBCUs and things like that, but it's just kind of, like I said, crazy to me how you go up in these white spaces and then you'd be claiming, like I said, woe is me, but then you don't even give back to your own. Why Why hasn't Beyonce and Jay-Z shown up at the BET Awards, the Soul Train Awards? Like, why haven't you guys tried to do anything for that? Because guess what? Beyonce probably would be winning at everything there. You know, it's like, if that's what y'all really want, if you want your wife to win everything, trust me, she will probably win every BET Award if she it goes. But guess what? It has become kind of like the BET Awards now is a little bit snub. It's looked at as ghetto. It's looked at as less than. And also, we see that they discuss value it too you can have you can take all that money and build your own award show it doesn't have to be the BET awards it doesn't have to be the Grammys the Oscars you can create your own type of award call shit call it the Beyonce and Jay-Z awards and it'll have traction it'll have um weight to it and they'll be giving out awards just like the influential awards like people that have done stuff for the black communities they have and like I said you can do the best albums of the year the best R&B the best hip-hop the best rappers you can have our type of things and you don't like i said because you guys disvalue the beats or you guys can honestly if it's even easier you guys can take over the bet awards you guys can probably put your foot in that and be like hey guys i want it to be something better i want people to stop coming up here dressed as trash because we've seen a lot of the girls do be not having any clothes on the guys don't really care they'll come in jeans let's try to like let's let's help our own selves before we're crying to the white man about oh this is like this award should have been to my wife it's like okay well the thing is she's been this isn't the first time she's been snubbed in this okay let's not, you don't even want to show up to our own awards and when i say our i mean my melanin warriors you don't want to show up to our things but then you want to be like i say crying for the like for these white people on this stage we all know beyonce has had the best album of the year multiple times but guess what she continues to get snubbed so why do you keep going to them and seeing your wife get snubbed if you want to actually make a difference, you want to make a change, you don't want to see your wife get snubbed, make a change. You definitely have the means and the rights and the, definitely the connections to do so. So to me, like I said, it's just a little ignorant of a statement to be doing that. But we love Beyonce. Beyonce is literally my childhood and she'll probably be, she still is right now my present too. So it's just like I said, I love Beyonce. Of course, I definitely believe she probably should have won album of the year. But guess what? At least Someone lemonade. Else, or yeah, it's like for Lemonade or even, um, for I even think um, I Am Sasha Fierce should have won it too. But I don't know if that one was actually nominated, but I know a lot of hers have been. So, and it's also like, just like how Miley kind of snubbed him after, I'm going to be happy with this award no matter what. And people were like, oh my gosh, she doesn't get it, she doesn't get it. And we're trying to make it like a black woke thing. But to me, it's just like, no, Miley was completely right. I'm going to be happy with this award no matter what. And it's also like Jay-Z, you literally got an impact award for an abuser. So it's just to me like, why, why are we even like, like I said, I appreciate a man that's going to stick up for his wife. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's just like, like I said, do it for your own people. Stop doing it on these shows. She's been snubbed multiple, multiple, multiple times. I would appreciate it more if he goes, hey guys, they snubbed my wife once again for these awards. So we're going to make our own. Bye. And guess what? Everyone would have shut. But maybe shut that's it not as, down. um. but I think that probably because of what they invest money into. You always got to think about how people who have a lot of money invest their money into not their time their money they invested their time into being seen at this award show but i don't think they would invest their money into building a black entertainment brand or network so i just but, don't but, see but that like, that's what i think don't hide the white ones yet. But shout out to Beyonce in that country music, you know. That's another topic for another day. We we know that we know you that y'all hate her down. you can't keep it. Texas hold them. When she releases she that from Texas. when she releases that country album, y'all be ready. If you're not ready, be ready now. You're gonna hear you're gonna see a lot of black cowboys and black cowgirls in the streets. Black Texans get ready. Black Houstonians get ready. Y'all already know. Next topic we can get into. What do we wanna address next? Okay, so um, Ooh, kinda... I'm going to just go with, okay, guys, I don't know if you guys are very familiar with this. You might be, you might not be, but major red dancing. Um, so I actually came across a video 
and it was um it was a little girl she was very young i would say probably not even older than six i would probably say around four or five years old she could have been six or seven but definitely clearly under 10 not a teenager you know as the ladies that are showing up there that are like college students she was dancing majorette dancing and if anyone knows that you can easily google it you can see what majorette dancing is it's a lot of um bucking it's a lot of you know it's intense hip-hop but it also incorporates jazz and incorporates drill team so it is very intense and it's not for it's not for everyone's liking right so the little girl was doing this short little routine um it was a quick little youtube short that i had saw and you know the comments the comments were crazy and i just remember i'm always getting like you know flames in the comments but there was there was <laughs> sometimes i win sometimes i overcome she fighting in the comments y'all but um there was like so there was a there was a kind of not really a division but basically the ladies some of the ladies and i would assume they're all ladies just because of their profile pictures but you know anyone can put anything for their profile picture but um they were basically just saying like this is so inappropriate my daughter would never be doing this she's too young to be dancing like this you know so but then there's another side to where it's like for me i see it from a different point of view because a lot of the dance just like okay ballet dancers jazz dancers contemporary dancers they start from a very young age too but it's looked at as you know that's okay so obviously ballet dancing is a lot different than major red dancing even though you can incorporate ballet into it um it is clearly a completely different you have on a tutu it's more it's seen as more classical more elegant whereas majorette is more like i said bucking like buck like it's literally called like buck me down you know buck it to the ground like it's very southern and i think it came from the south don't quote me on that though but it's a very different type of dancing that like i said not everyone is keen to so a part of me was like okay i see where these dancers are coming from this girl is pretty young to be shaking her booty to be like you know bucking to be doing like the the big leaps that they do throwing their legs back you know i can kind of see that but then i'm also like okay well we it's just like to me it, it just kills me because it's just like a part of me is like well damn but you can kind of look at it that way in any type of way because literally after i saw that youtube short i saw i saw a little um i saw a little girl who was doing stunting and cheerleading so she had on a tiny skirt you know she had her cute little cheer uniform very probably around the same age maybe just a little bit older but definitely still like i said not a teenager and this man was flipping her up his hands were like you know in her thighs like obviously he's he's literally she's a flyer he's literally her base he's catching her and it was just like you know partner stunts so it's just the man and it's just a little girl so i'm just like how can we look at that as okay and like because to me both of them are fine to me because like i said i i can understand the art of it and understand where these little girls are trying to go they're trying to be she's trying to be the best part she's trying to be a gabby butler you know the other ones and then this girl's probably trying to be on dd for l you know like on dancing dolls so it's like i can see both of their potentials and where they're trying to go and they're just doing it a lot earlier and it's being obviously we're seeing things way more like you know we're seeing things a lot more uh quickly now because obviously everything can be recorded you know streamed whatever but I'm just like, those comments are like, oh my gosh, she's such a hard worker. That's amazing. Da, da, da. Now, granted, I do see there is clearly a difference in cheerleading and major at dancing. There's clearly, like I said, even the music type is very different. So I can see cheerleading being more poppy and more like, you know, stiff. They're stiff with their movements. They're trying to be sharp. But it's like a major at dancing. Like I said, it's flow. Like It's hip hop. Like, you know, like I said, it's more Southern. So to me, I just always looked at it as, well, either way, either of these things can be seen as perverted and provocative for a young girl to do, but I just always feel like it goes back to our society and how we view things. I feel like the girl, granted, this girl was probably bucking in front of other girls trying out for the majorette team, and this girl was doing a competition for her cheerleading. So uh, anyone can say that that's inappropriate. Why does she have this big man holding her? And da, da, da. Well, obviously a big man needs to be able to catch her, right? So it's like you wouldn't want a little girl catching her. And then it's also like for the majorette, it's more, um, it's independent. They have like, you know, stand battles and stuff like that. So it's intense. It's more of like a, it's almost like crumping too. Like you can incorporate crumping in that too. So it's a little bit more, you know, I guess rugged. But I just always see it as... Our society views a lot of little girls so sexually now to where it's just like they can't really do anything without it being seen as like seen as negative or too promiscuous or too sexual or she's too young to be doing all that when in reality I feel like 
we should be more so looking at these girls are talented and we know what they want to accomplish. Mm. But I also feel like, you know, cheerleading is clearly well, very well known around everywhere, clearly. Major at dancing, I don't believe is. So that could be a like that could be kind of a barrier too. But I just always feel like I look at it as these little girls are talented, they're doing what they want to do. And, you know, if they want to get to their goal of being on this best team or being on a TV show or she wants to be the best flyer or she wants to be a cheer coach herself, I always look at it as this is just them being young. But because they're young girls, it's just like it's always looked at in a sexual manner. And that's that. The older girls, just like how we see in this picture, the older girls, obviously it's looked at a bit differently because it's like they're older, but still even, but I, that's why I can use that as well because cheerleaders that are older, like the ones in cheer, and then the one, like these major dangers that you guys see here, we look at them kind of the same way we looked at them, like some people looked at them as kids, but it's now it's like, oh, it's grown, so I'm okay to look at them this way. And I feel like that's, that's the weird. only, that's the that's only, weird, and though, that's what yeah. I feel like is the only thing that changes. Because it's so wrong to look at a little girl that way, which to me, I don't look at little girls that way. Like I said, when I saw her cheering and when I saw her bucking, I was like, oh, okay, good. Like, you know, I just reminded me of, performing. it reminded me of Dancing Dolls and Bring It, you know, from Lifetime. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe that's what she's, maybe this is one of their, um, you know, training camps or, you know, one of their clinics. And then same with the cheerleading girl. I was like, oh, she's going to be a great flyer because she's learning all these basics right now like i just look at it as talent i look at these young girls as talented i don't look at them in a perverted mindset to where it's like she shouldn't have on that little tight skirt she shouldn't have on that crop top she shouldn't be bucking like this she, but you think it's weird that people are bringing attention in the comments saying to she like be that yeah way. she shouldn't be doing it. But, but like i said to each their own because i'm not a parent so i understand if you as a parent are uncomfortable with your with your daughter bucking like this and maybe dancing to not the best music you know i can understand that and i can see you know it's hey that's your child that's your decision that's what you want to do um but i just say you know i just always want to see uh kids grow so what they like clearly the girl the little girl the only thing i see wrong only thing i would ever see wrong with it is if you're forcing your child to do something she doesn't want to do because it's like yeah. that's clearly just gonna first of all it's wasting their life that's wasting your money and that's wasting both of you guys' time i just I, I just think it's like the movement you know i feel like i mean because we we uh we we've watched Tony Brienne, so we saw her video when she was talking about the um the little girl the little girls at the party who were dancing mm -hmm. to uh who were dancing sexy to sexy red. Red. that's like unacceptable that's old. unacceptable yeah. I think that with society now since we have so much access to the internet like you just see so many so many people's opinions you'll see people who like she like Chris said oh that's great dancing that's great I'll give him a ten out of ten and then you'll see a a guy or someone random I'm just I'm putting the mail because obviously more men are in the comments saying fucked up shit than anybody that's just my opinion sorry but you'll see a man probably just saying like they shouldn't be dressing like that or that's kind of that's kind of weird or why does she look like that and that's it's like you're being a creep because you're going out of your way to comment on your thoughts of viewing them sexually you all you're saying is I'm viewing them in a sexual manner and not in a performative manner and we've already had conversations of this we had it with Alicia and um, Usher, y'all view it as sexual, while people who view it as art, you view it as they are putting on a performance. And those and are adults. But I, I just want to tie it all together like that. Yeah, and the only thing, because that, that's true, what he had just said. It's just for me, seeing how majorette dancing is, it is a lot of aggressive, jerky, hip hop. Um, you use your hips a lot. You use, obviously, your legs. You have to have a lot of stamina. It's, to me, it's such an amazing skill for these girls to be dancing 10 minutes in a row, doing stand battles, doing it. And like I said, to some, like I said, it is a, it is a particular audience that likes it because they just think our girls are getting down they're performing they're they're doing their thing and then and you also have like baby dolls too which is like usually a baby team of whatever and they they are obviously babies they're younger they're a lot younger than maybe the teenage girls or the college women so that's why i just say it is like a very thin line like i said it all just comes down to parenting if you are uncomfortable with your child dancing like this 
then you know hey and then also I would hope that you educate your girls if you are comfortable you know hey we're doing these movements because it's a dance that you're doing not because you feel you need to do this out in public or because you need to do this for a male attention or male gaze or to get further in life you know I just hope like you know with everything you can kind of teach them moving forward but I just know majorette dancing is a very particular type of dancing I still got it a little bit differently but you know to each their own you can always teach just teach whatever you value um for your child you know if you don't want her bucking then hey don't yeah. don't have her majorette you know? the next the next um section i wanted to get into this is specific for me it's probably not gonna be um that long but it is definitely on the rise of this apple provision um the headset i guess um <clears throat> let's just like take a little quick trip down memory lane. come come back with me you know go back in time with me if you remember just like having normal gaming systems and the thought of oh a gaming camera that's revolutionary cool you can video yourself while playing video games awesome then it turned into motion control like with the wii and connect even though connect is awful um the wii you know moving moving your body now the game can capture your movements and, and that's cool and then of course you get vr virtual reality that kind of really pressed the fast forward button on leaving the leaving the world you're in behind for an actual virtual one and of course like meta tried some stuff with the meta quest helmets and i feel like you could avoid the revolution of virtual reality until now we have this vr headset which i'm not gonna sit here and be like a techno hater trust me i do like technology i like the latest versions of technology um i do but i feel like with what we're seeing now with Apple in this ProVision head, headset, because it's it's popular, because it's Apple. Like, let's be real here. The me, we weren't talking about the MetaQuest ones because niggas weren't rocking with MetaQuest because we weren't even rocking with Meta because of, you know, it just, just because it doesn't, it's not the name value. But when you slap Apple on something, I gotta buy it. It's, yeah. it's, it's new, you know, newest iPhone, newest Mac, newest iPad, now I gotta get the ProVision. All fun and games. I feel like a major problem, and it's not gonna stop by the way, so this isn't like a, oh, we need to stop this. It's, it's just going to get more popular. The cheaper it becomes, I think it's like nearly $4,000. That's two months worth of most niggas rent. So if you're willing to pay two months Even worth of three rent, months. three months, some places. Um, my concern with it is the videos I saw when it first came out of people like on the subway with it on or walking in the middle of the street with it on. And I've seen the perspective of it. Like if you're looking straight on right now, you can imagine, oh, I want to open up a tab of YouTube and watch a video and then I can pause it and, and I can throw that tab away so I can literally put it in another room. And then when I walk over there, it's That's still there. Cool. That is kind of cool. Don't get me wrong, it's fine. Of course, for someone like me, a sports guy, let me have a game on going here. Let me have the highlights in the background. Let me have my, my schedule on my calendar somewhere else. It's great. But my problem is when we see these videos of the people like fucking around wearing it out out in public, you're still losing some of your vision. It's no different than I'm looking down at my phone and I'm looking at a video on my phone and then I get hit by a car. The same thing can happen when you're wearing the the, the Pro Vision, the, the Vision Pro, whatever. So I get that. But I saw what, what really brought my attention was I was watching a Ryan Trahan video. If you know Ryan Trahan, you know, you know he's a really great uh, content creator. He wore one for 50 hours straight and of course, it's one of those challenges. I was in, I was engaged, but you could tell after just about a couple of hours, he was wearing it, kept recharging it, and things like that. I'm not I'm not advising you to wear the thing longer than what you need to wear it for, because clearly you shouldn't be wearing it for 50 hours. It was a challenge, but you could tell it was already affecting him, not just mentally, but it's like you're constantly staring at a screen. You're not staring at like you're not staring at the world. You're staring at a screen, and you're still. You're still losing a bit of your like peripheral vision. You're still losing something. Like I, I feel like you're giving up something to wear it. So it's not me like complaining like, oh, it shouldn't be a thing or it shouldn't exist. I mean, it's, you know, if you like virtual reality, you do. But my concern with it is in our society, we're so clout based. We're so, I'm doing something for money and I want to do a crazy thing with this expensive new gadget that i'm afraid that we're going to be seeing like accidents happening that people are going to be like because there are people messing around like oh i'm drunk i think one of the more popular videos was somebody was, was in a tesla yo i know i feel about tesla that's another subject for another day um teslas there was somebody in a tesla wearing it look 
we already have been saying for decades now, don't, 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 don't drink and drive, don't text and drive. Okay, I don't know why I said drink and drive, because you should know not to drink and drive. But don't text and drive. And people still do it. People still on the phones, they're still on the phones, they're still doing makeup while they're driving. Like, you're still doing stupid shit while you're driving when you shouldn't be. People are going to make it more accepted, acceptable to wear this damn headset while they're driving. That's what I truly believe. Or walking around in public with it while you just while you just have it. Or in school, we've already seen a problem with kids in school not paying attention. Imagine if some kid who got one for Christmas wore it in class. Oh, take it off. Oh, but I'm still learning. I'm still learning while I'm, you know, it's just gonna be more reasons to try to blend reality with what is virtually given to you because of how much money you have. I would not personally trust putting a device on my head from Apple, because out of nowhere, I mean, people's Apple phones, your, your Apple phones be, be bugging out when the newest one comes out. What happens if your Apple Pro Vision starts bugging out when the new one comes out? What, what does that bugging out look like? Does it hurt? Does, it, does the screen start to mess up? I'm always thinking, why would I have this on my head for so long? Why the hell do I need to watch a movie through a headset when I can put it on my TV? And that screen's farther, and we already are spending all our time on screens. And we're so focused on, uh, how do I make everything so easy and, and accessible to me? If you know the movie Wally, you know it. I think we're closer to those big people who are in the little tubes just you in. You mean Wreck-It Ralph? No, not Wreck-It Ralph. No, because what? I mean, no, 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 not Wreck-It Ralph. I the, think of Wreck-It Ralph. You think of Wreck-It Ralph? No, but you haven't seen Wally, so I'll have to. Put, I have seen I'll have to put a background. You know what I'm talking about? I'll put a background of it somewhere while I'm talking here. You get it? It's those big people in the chairs, and they were on a cruise ship in space, and they had a huge screen in front of them. And I'm telling you, they, they, there was nothing they needed to leave for. The bathroom was taken care of by robots. The food was delivered instantly. And I just feel like that's what we're going to instead of like what's going to happen. But just, just be prepared for more videos online. People are going to be getting in accidents with the, I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm, I'm telling you this is going to happen because people, some people are dumb as hell with a lot of money and they do dumb things. And this is something that you put your, you, you, you put on your face and I'm like, you're going to get it sweaty because you're going to want to take it to the gym. People are going to want to use it in the shower, you know? And I, and like I said, what, what Ryan did was funny because it was like, it was a content trying to show you what it's like. But what's funny is at the end of that video, when he took it off after 50 hours, I love this part of it, he took it off and he edited it to make it look like he was just in this white room, like he was literally in another world. Like, so it didn't look like how it did when he would take it off normally. And I thought to myself, I said, I know why I put that ending in there because that's how you're gonna feel after wearing it for so long. You're literally in a different world. Like you almost feel more comfortable not being in reality but you feel more comfortable not being a part of it. So I feel like instead of trying to accept reality for what it is, we're just trying to cover it up with all more advertisement stuff. And that's another thing, y'all, just think about it now. Imagine ads randomly popping up in your face and you have to swipe them away with your hands. That shit's annoying. I feel like that's what they're gonna do with that damn thing. You're gonna have it on your face, you're gonna be watching a YouTube video, and it's gonna be, oh, some ad for this, some ad for this, it's gonna pop up in your face, and you're gonna have to move your hands around. I just, I don't know what happened. Like, why do we care so much about, oh, I can move an app with my hands and about, it's weird. I don't get it. I don't get it. Me, about me people, you know, just um, losing their way. And that kind of reminds me of... We're late. Uh, we're late on that. It was that. kind of like an Alice in Borderland, you know, when they oh. had on those things and they had to kill each other. Oh, I know yeah. I took it real dark. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, you know, if you're playing a game and you're swinging and you're flailing your arms, now you've hit someone. Now you're getting punched in real life. But then you think you have a gun and then you really do have a gun. And it's just like yeah. I said, it's just like I said, yeah. it might just morph you too much. And then also, like I said, you really don't need a screen that close to your face. Ever. Why? Um, because they already, I'm sorry, you guys already thought watching TV and sitting in front of the TV was bad as a child. What makes you think the TV being on your eyes? Is he L laying in bed? with the phone in your face I'm a victim of it I'm sorry laying it we're both victims of it but laying in bed with the phone in front of your face and it's dark and the only screen or the only light you have in the room is that screen that's bad for your eyes this is this isn't something saying like oh Apple you guys suck I can't say that I'm using one of the devices right now okay I'm using well, one of the you do. Right but uh, anyway she's using she uses the devices as well what I'm saying is just because it's trendy, just because it's new and fresh and can seem exciting, look, really look at the reviews of it and don't buy what all the trendy stuff can be. Mm -hmm. um, you see the color purple on here? I really just wanted to let you guys know. This is really for not just can we talk, but also the report card. Um, 
If you are ever wondering, clearly you know we're black. I'm just letting you know right now. Right now. If you're shocked, I'm sorry. Um, there's no reason to apologize, actually. We're very proud of our skin color. Um, but you do know that we do review content um, and media that ranges. But we will not be reviewing media that has any real um, tragic like black depictions. I actually just met up with a new friend recently. And he had pretty much said something that I thought was really funny and I could relate to it as well. He said, if I see any more like movies that remind that remind black people of slavery times, like, you know, I'll turn crazy. And I was like, I laughed because I was like, yeah, I can relate to that because we you won't you won't catch us reviewing the 12 years of slave. You won't catch us reviewing the color purple. The reason behind it is because we're, we're exhausted. We're absolutely exhausted. I always make the explanation of um, the reason why these were made is because we need to teach, you know, history and whatnot. But even when we were growing up, our history of who we were and how we truly were was whitewashed. It's as simple as that. You know, now it's trying to be woke and caught up, but it's a little bit late. But we don't, we need to see more black original stories. So that's what you will expect from us. We're just not going to be reviewing guys, slave content, side whipping. Story, quick side story. Sorry to cut you What's off. What's she getting into now? Guys, quick side story. story. Whenever I was younger and I was in high school, one of my teachers, it was my history teacher, of course, you know, he was from St. Louis. I won't say his name, but anyways, um, he literally, so we were talking, we were at a point in history, we were talking about slavery now. And once again, this is a white presenting male, okay? This man is white. He is not mixed. He is completely Caucasian. And he literally, once again, this is just where it goes to show the ignorance and the whitewash of our history because he literally looks at the class which granted it was a mixed class it was like hispanics it was blacks it was whites but it was more so two blacks one hispanic the rest were white okay so let's just say that gotta fill up that diversity and chart so tell me why he literally looks at us and he goes guys i'm not meaning to say this in any negative way and i don't mean to offend Yikes. any of you you already know you already, you already know already and you gotta put a disclaimer no it's gonna be some fucked up he shit. literally goes slavery was not as bad as you guys may think oh that's yeah and then he goes he goes a lot of these slaves were treated very well um of course there were some that were beaten and some that were you know t um uh, I don't think he didn't say taking advantage of but he just said he goes not actually he really just talked about the positive the positivity of it air quotes positivity he just said Yo. a lot of them were taken care of they had homes they had clothes on them they were able to cook and learn basic skills if you don't realize how ignorant that sounds you're already gone. You're did he have? Gone. Did he have some of his own? He's talking like that's he got what personal I'm saying. experience. I'm just like once Dead again, ass. if this was a black man saying this, it is looked at a different life because maybe his ancestry was a little bit different. But to me, no matter who you are, I still view you as a coon. That's what saying. I'm saying. Like yeah, I'm because that's why you the word don't. Is ev no one. None of us are from the past. None of us were in the 1800s. None of us ever knew that. So for you to go up there and sit and talk to, and uh, the class was a lot of women. Like I do know that. That for you to sit here and say you basically are saying oh yeah they weren't really raped they weren't really chained they weren't really burned they weren't really have their foot cut off get sliced up get used as experimentation and be like oh it wasn't that bad no matter if it happened to one ten fifty five thousand people it was still all wrong so I don't care how you try to whitewash it and make it seem like it wasn't that bad. They had homes. Why couldn't they have their own homes? Why couldn't they have their own clothes to go buy for themselves? Why couldn't they have their own communities? Because you, who are who is saying this, a Caucasian man thinks that it was okay. We're helping them. We're helping that white savior trope. Tragic black media. We will not be reviewing that because it's not healthy for us mentally and also we're not going to ever be able to i mean okay, what do you want us to do give 12 years of slave an s because it was so accurate it like what are you supposed to do yeah, what, you know what's supposed to do because it's like okay because it's like okay well 12 years of slave did make me cry i was horrified um but i would never give that an s because that's just sh that's just like profiting off of like terrible trauma that happened to our ancestors what trauma? but then i wouldn't give it an I wouldn't want to give it an F either because it's like, that's like me saying like, oh my God, our trauma is just so, so we just don't like, watch irrelevant. It. Let's yeah. say we just don't watch it. Now, don't it's, get me wrong. But of course, it's, a, it's not like, I'm not going to sit there and be hypocritical and tell you like, she hasn't watched um, Judas and the Black Messiah. You know, I, I think that's a phenomenal movie because, because I can see the characters depicting, you know, what was going on back then um, at that time. But it's better that just know 
we do we 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 do probably will watch some of the movies, but it's not like we'll ever review them. It depends on the actors and things of nature. But like the color purple is the real reason why. Like we know it's a musical. We I'm gonna be so real with you because my mother Lily has this movie on DVD. She's had it on she's having on she had it on DVD. Hell she had it on VHS. I right? you don't know what that is. <laughs> You're young. <laughs> You're young, hey. But anyways, um, I know the color purple from the original color purple, and that was a like <laughs> depiction of like you know slavery, and to see it kind of be modernized into like this musical, um, I'm not gonna yeah I gotta lean up for this one. That shit fucking disgusted me. Okay, I'm just being real. It really did. Shucking and jiving. Let's sing. Let's dance. Let's act like it wasn't so bad. Let's stop. We do not need to make any more media depictions of us going through the struggle and through hell and then someone comes in and says let's make them sing and dance what that's not what we were I doing back then i think it was meant to go to show the light of it to go to show the light that even as, there's no as light they, slavery as they put us down we found a light to keep going to keep prospering yeah but to me it's just like we just don't we just i don't see it that way we just don't need it to be seen as like a positive oh the color purple was amazing because it's like you have more people like your teacher yeah, because we don't exactly because it'll because it will thing, it yeah. will denounce and um, devalue what our ancestors went. Because think thirty years. So. This is the last thing I think. Think think thirty or forty years from now. Think your teacher saying, "See, guys, slavery wasn't." Because it's going to be even farther. Because that's what happens with time. The farther it gets, the more people forget the impact that it had at that mm -hmm. time you know that's why people make 9-11 jokes now because people are like oh well that was so long, long ago, ago. and cares? it was like that was 20 years like, ago that yeah. was that was a little bit over 20 years ago and we and people make jokes about it so think about watching the color purple when you see singing and dancing in it of course it's going to be a teacher of any skin color by the way it's not like we're just going against the fact that he was white of any skin color saying oh well you see if you saw the color purple it wasn't so bad for them what Anyways, that's all I wanted to say when it came to that. That's why you won't be seeing us reviewing stuff in the channel. But speaking of, for our last topic, do you have anything else to say on the track? Oh, no, I'll go all day. We can talk all day so, about that. I'm joking. Anyway, um, I always question, um, because of the comment sections we see, because of influencers and streamers and people who view negative comments all the time, because of how fan bases act, because of how people react online and in person, um, do we truly share too much as a society today? I feel like technology is, we're not, instead of trying to learn, we're trying to know what's truly in someone else's mind. And I feel like we're not supposed to for a reason. Like, I feel like we're not really supposed to know what someone else is thinking. We can't read minds, but I think we use technology and the internet specifically, really just the internet specifically, as a way to peek into someone else's mind, which true at times there is Instagram profiles, X or Twitter profiles, Facebook, all that shit. We always try to know, know what other people are thinking, but it pushes us from it pushes us from knowing truly who people are, like who you are inside morally. And I feel like when you get into a comment section and you want to say something nice but bring attention to something like how Chris did. And then you see like back, like just hatred or whatnot. Or even like when we post something and we see a negative comment or, or what, because it happens. I just feel like, I feel like we, ju we just share too much now. Like we share too much of life to where we don't believe, we don't believe what we're seeing at all. Like we don't, like it used to be Facebook wasn't real and what we see on Facebook isn't real in advertisement. Now it's TikTok. Because it's too much of like, I have advice. No, I have advice. No, I have advice for that advice. No, I have advice for that advice because that advice wasn't good. So I'm gonna give you my advice. Stop, stop. Take a breath and understand that that advice right. And we're hypocritical because we're trying to fucking give advice. Not like we know everything. We're sharing our thoughts on the internet. But understand, this is truly how we think. But there's enough people where they share too much on the internet for money and for clout and for fame. Too many people trying to put negative comments on the internet because they know that negativity will drive more clicks and messages and money than positivity, which I think is really sad. So my question, my last question for you, Chris, is do, do you think we're sharing too much of a society now? And if so, how can, is there any way we can improve on that? I just want to know your thoughts on um, that. I would just say I am a very separative person. A what? I'm sorry. They, did you say sexual? Huh? I said secretive. Secretive. So clearly secretive. Secretive. Um, oh. Secretive. Um, Keep person, things on the wraps. I have.
have ever since I was younger, like when social media was first coming up with Instagram, Facebook, all those things, I never like, first of all, digital footprint is very real. So I never wanted that. And I already knew what field I wanted to go into. So I knew that that was going to be very important. But for me, I never saw the value in it. I always wanted to have close, meaningful relationships. So I am not the best person to talk on this topic because I am ignorant to a lot of social medias. Like I have never even sent a DM and I can probably say that I've never sent a DM and I've never received one either because um, I just am not the type of person to share all my business. I don't care if I'm going to Hawaii. I don't care if I've gotten an award. I don't care if I just got married. The people that are around me that love me will know, and that's all I need to know. I don't need the whole world to know. And of course, people want to manipulate it and say, oh, you're ashamed of what's going on, or no. To me, it's just, I don't hold any value. Now I see it has changed a lot because you can make a lot of money off social media. Um, so it has changed, you know, the dynamic of it. Cause some people do it solely for that. I need to make this money. So I have to share these Get things. Get the bag. So, um, but then you're doing, you just, do, you're just doing wrong things. I just think that like, when we see people making trends of like, here's how I cheat on my person or here's why, or here, or you're sharing too many. Here's a good one. Here's a good one. Oh, I make $200,000 a year from this job I work from home and I don't do anything here's what I do in my day you're sharing too much you're sharing too much and then you wonder why those opportunities and jobs aren't available anymore oh here's how I was able to sneak into this concert Mm -hmm. I I dressed up as that you're sharing too much like I said why are you but you're sharing it because you saw some other trend online and it blew up and it's like but you're chasing something it's just another drug and that's what people need to understand how you view um, the devil's lettuce, how you view alcohol, how you view stuff that you snore. It's no different to me than cloud. And you're sharing, we're all sharing too much information. I don't understand why we're sharing so much because it's almost like you feel like, oh, I got to find something that someone else relates to. And if they don't relate to it, it, then I don't mean anything. But you do mean something. You do not have to have a profile. You do not have to have a digital footprint. You don't have to be caught up to everything to be yourself. And it's not like you have to know everything. But because society will tell you, if you don't make $10,000 in a month, you're nothing. If you're not married by this certain age, you're nothing. If you don't have a relationship by this time, you're nothing. If you don't wear these certain clothes, if you don't look this certain size, if you don't... Shit, if you don't play this fucking sport. If you don't... if you, There's so many things that you can see online that can... That you think can help mold you, but it's only hurting you more. That's why we use the picture of the girl sitting against the wall looking like she's depressed. You know, because that's how most people are when they're online anyways. It does... Um, appease you or impede you from literally having social interactions. Like Mm. I said, my friends have to call me or text me to communicate with me. They can't send me a quick DM or like one of my pictures to be like, oh yeah, hey, she's doing good. No, you have to reach out to me. You actually have to communicate with me because I'm not going to see it. Um, Or I don't even have anything to see. So it's just to me, it's also, it has been a very bad detriment t- towards people, um, the younger generations in terms of social interactions because they don't know how to speak. They don't have manners. They don't know how to spell. They don't know how to write. Like, Oh my you, God, the spelling and the, that's a whole so, other thing another day. Yeah, We're but reading it's just, and writing. like I said, oh God. it's just, you have to, like I said, people are so, that's why I said, it's literally a sickness. It's going to be probably an actual diagnosis come 2025 about Social being media chronically disease. online. Chronically online. Because to where it's like, you think that everything is for everybody and whenever someone doesn't agree with you, it's time to cancel them. It's time to punish them. It's time to give them their, literally like what whatever negative connotation you want to take it. It's just like, everyone's going to do their own thing. No one cares about this. And trust and believe you're going to be forgot about to literally like two weeks later if even two days later oh yeah hours. being you're, you, you it's already a thing being chronically online like people will post a meme or a gif or a picture of something and they'll say unless you're chronically online you won't get this because you either get it or you don't that's where the if you know you know things come from what i wanted to really just round this out with today um and just let you guys know is is that it, it's it just life is really about finding out who you are and it's never gonna stop. You're never gonna stop finding out who you are. But I'm gonna tell you one place you're not gonna find out who you are, that's on the internet. 
That um, you know, I would honestly say if you are someone who is, um, so wait, I'll start now. Start. If you are someone, back to his question where he asked me, you know, how do I think we could change it from like kind of, kind of being chronically online, sharing too much. I would definitely say just like how, honestly, a good thing that iPhones have done and also I think Samsung devices is they show you your screen time. Mm. And it'll show you what apps you use as well. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if you know you're on Instagram 12 hours out of the day, babe, that's half the day. So I would think, unless it's for a business type thing or something that is, because you know, some people might go on Instagram to look at funny things. That's how kind of TikTok started with me. I don't have it anymore, but. Um, unless you work, obviously, if you're like a, if you're like a social media manager, or if you're a content, yeah, so if that's, that's your job, right. we understand. But like, I'm we just get saying, in terms of some, if you truly want to change, and you're like, I am kind of on um, social media too much, I am kind of more depressed because I keep comparing myself to these ladies, to these men, to da 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 da, or to this dating life, or to this house, or you know whatever. I would definitely say take a look at your screen time. So each week, make a goal for yourself. It's not going to be easy to just go cold turkey. Only some people can do it. Some people can go cold turkey and be like, oh, I, I hate this. I'm going to delete every single thing. But some people, I, I wish know, that was me. I know, like you might, so say you said 10 hours on Instagram and then five hours on TikTok. Try to get those down an hour each week. Be like, okay, maybe I have four on TikTok now and I have nine, you know, and just take it little by little. Some weeks you might end up going up more on, mm -hmm. maybe you'll start going up on TikTok and have seven, but you'll have three on, you know, Instagram, you know, whatever it is. Kind of just narrowing it out and trying to find a best way for you to where you're like maybe finding a game that you might want to play or maybe reading something or maybe instead of that time where I'm scrolling, let me do a quick workout what, or something. What else could I be? Look at those or hours and I ask walk? yourself what else could I be maybe doing? Maybe I'll listen to a new album, listen to a new song or something, you know? Do something, do something outside of your norm, you know? Because I know we get, we obviously, especially now with how high everything is, we get into such a routine type you know feel of everything we get into such a routine like wake up work work out sleep you know eat or eat then sleep you're, you know, you're then lucky to, to get all that shit in you're lucky to get yeah. that in most people are wake up work go to the bathroom maybe eat sleep do it again that so ass. yeah so to me it's just like just taking time for yourself you know what it is that you like what do you see on instagram or maybe you know maybe clearing out your instagram to work because i know some ladies they only have positive quotes or bible verses or even affirmations on their things so of course if you're on that a lot you have a higher sense of self but also you're probably not going to be sitting there reading affirmations for 12 hours so that will also help too and you know what kind of things are you exposing yourself to you're exposing yourself to a lot of toxic relationships a lot of toxic men to where like women you know will end up hating men because that's all we see on our thing and then vice versa to men so it's kind of just like you know take your time figure out what you know what it is that you truly like to see and what you value and then like i said just try to lower it down each day because like i said i know it's and then maybe one day you will be able to go cold turkey maybe yep. when you get to three hours on both you'll be like i don't even want to waste three hours on and i'm allowing this out i'll round this out by giving y'all my own personal challenge because i feel like none of this can be meaningful unless we give you own personal experiences which is a, so i'm going to challenge you whoever's listening to this now whether you're listening to it the day it was released whether you listen to it a month year 10 years later whatever i'm not the best with this stuff um i've tried my best to go cold turkey or whatever but i literally have turned my i've turned part of my social media life as i give air quotes into the creative outlet so obviously we thank you guys for joining us in today make sure to like make sure to comment and subscribe make sure to check check us out on all the social media things we're on oh check us out in the discord i cannot say this enough i don't even know how to work it really but go ahead the discord thing it's in the link add the link and give suggestions of things you would like to hear videos or things you would like to hear our opinions of anything you want to say